uh, founded India's first games company in 1997. So my company is uh, 18 years in business. It, it's also perhaps the largest company in India in the game space. We have about 300 people in Bangalore. Um, and uh, I have also recent, recently just started a games incubator called Game Tantra. In fact, we announced yesterday a, a partnership between Game Tantra Incubator and the Nazara Game Fund to, to offer uh, in, uh, you know, mentoring, incubation and seed funding for gaming startups in India. We want to create a forum that becomes a platform for sharing of knowledge and sharing of successes and failures so that people are you know, by and large then enriched by that experience of being in a, in a platform like this. Mr. Rao, so considering you've been the chairperson for the gaming forum here at, at, with NASCOM, how has the forum grown? Or forum has grown years? tremendously. I mean, when we f did our first conference six years back, it was like a satellite event under some other event. And it was a one day uh, conference and we had 150 people. And then the next year was 300. The next year was 700, the next year was some 1000, I mean, this year it's 1500, last year was like 1250 or something. So it's growing at it's a very, very rapid rate. Yeah, rapid. And uh, it is kind of now attracting uh, the right, uh, you know, the right ingredients. We have a great expo floor of a lot of people showcasing their, their, their tools and technology. We have great showcase of indies and students. That's one of the first, well, it's the first for us this year. And uh, we have a great set of sponsors who are supporting us. And uh, most important is that we have a fantastic team at the gaming forum, uh, like the NASCOM gaming forum content committee and the organizing team, which is all people doing uh, you know, pro bono and just contributing their time and energy to curate the sessions to make sure that the best speakers. Good content and yeah, good because sessions. it's all about curation. Yeah. I mean, it's easy to fill up two days with quickly if you wanted to, but it's far more difficult to make sure that you have the best people True. for those topics to come and speak. Because retention matters. Retention is yeah, I mean, people attending. We may have the numbers like this year, but if, if people go back and say, we didn't really learn anything new, yeah. you know, this news will spread fast. Yeah. It will go on the online forums, it will be on Facebook. People say, ah, we were disappointed. But here, we, what we are hearing from people is like, this is awesome and we are, going, we are going to be back next year. You also, apart from being the chairperson of the gaming forum with NASCOM, uh, you also are the founder of Dhruva Entertainment. Dhruva Interactive. Dhruva Interactive. Yes. Yeah. Now, I'm presuming since like it's one of the oldest, it is the oldest gaming company. It is the oldest games company in, games company in yeah. India. Tell me a little more about how Dhruva happened. Well, Dhruva happened when I was really young and very enthusiastic. I started a of company. Of course, we all are. We all are at a point of time. <laughs> so, I started a multimedia company in 95, immediately after college. And then uh, two years later, we were bored of doing multimedia. And we got suckered into gaming by an Intel evangelist who said, multimedia is cool, but gaming is evil and even better. So, so you got roped around the evil side. Everybody yeah. wants to be evil, you yeah, know. Yeah, it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a really good <laughs> pitch. And I think we were ready for doing something really, uh, you know, outlier variety. And so that's how the name Dhruva came about because we sat down and we were writing this project report uh, on what we're going to do in games. And we said, you know, Dhruva is the, is the name of the North, is of the pole star. Yeah, it's the, the pole star. It's the star that leads the way. And we, were, we knew we were going to lead the way for games because we were going to become the first gaming company. You know, nobody was there then. Okay, okay. So that's how the name came about. The Western startup typically is of people who've been developers in the industry by way of working for some other company, maybe some of the bigger companies, who've been working for five, ten years, and then they do a startup. So they're very experienced people. They've all they've been doing games for a while, and they're very seasoned and experienced. Whereas in India, the startup ecosystem is by and large characterized by young people who are just out of college. Yeah. So they don't have. They have a lot of ideas. Hmm. They have lots of energy, but they lack the experience and they lack some of the skills that is required to make a great product. Yeah, so that's where we thought we will perfectly complement them because uh, you know, we have the, the, the number of years in the industry and, and we know what works and we can help them with, you know, guide yeah, probably them. Probably we can like end up making like the next Ubisoft the world. I don't know, I don't know about that, but definitely we can help people make better games yeah. and we can help massage their ideas in the right direction 
we can provide them with uh, access to a fantastic mentor pool and uh, now we are in a position to offer them seed funding so that they can live in Bangalore and not have to worry about money. So we are offering them 12 and a half lakhs for uh, as seed funding for the six months program. Mm -hmm. Of course, if they make, make that money last longer, that's good for them. But that's what we are offering. Uh, and, uh, and I think it should be something that should really benefit the startup ecosystem. Because I think most of them struggle with, you know, half the time they are struggling for when do I pay the next yeah. bills and you know so with with a setup like this at least for that period of time you can just completely focus on your art and your work and not have to worry about money not have to worry about infrastructure not have to worry about high quality internet and doing you know have a, we have a nice cafeteria where we have good good coffee you so know you're taking care of everything there <laughs> you're taking care of everything just focus it's like, yeah. it's like putting blinders we'll have mentors there. who will walk in uh, you know whenever you know we schedule with different people different times no, this, this, you know what this sounds like to me this is like a huge uh, live in Indian Idol there who have like a lot of mentors <laughs> and he find out the and we actually not even find out we make the best singer yeah. available for the masses and I think that's what the gaming fraternity really needs yeah, I think you it's, need good content I think you need good games I think that is true I think uh, right now I think one of the tasks that we have is uh, how to manage the expectations of all these young people yeah. because today that energy is so high and this this almost an assumption that my energy and my endeavors will become successful mm -hmm. whereas the reality is that this is a very very cruel hits yeah, driven it's business it's cruel where business. literally every day it's hundreds of games that are being released yeah. so if your game does not get exposure or it does not get critical acclaim or it does not get notice you could end up with a game that has no downloads yeah. and if it has no downloads then how do you make money that's a big morale let down also exactly so you could make the best game but if it doesn't get out there and does not get discovered it's as good as I mean what's the analogy it's like you make a if you're a great painter you made the best painting that you could ever paint but it's in your bedroom and nobody else can get to see so it. So tell me one thing Mr. Rao so what happens to ga uh, uh, game developers like uh, so the guy who made Flappy Bird, he's yeah. now so disgruntled with his creation that he's like, I don't want to make more games like this. I'm out of here. So what happens to gamers like that? That's a freak one, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's a freak one. I mean, if I could think of several indies who would convert that into a great opportunity, <laughs> even if they didn't like their game, they could have done a different job of of kind of pivoting that game to something else. <laughs> but that's that also shows you that uh, games are a form of art. Yeah. And artists are quirky. Yeah. Right. There is that element of quirkiness. It just takes each step of madness. Yeah. It's it is that way, stage. and uh, you know you gotta respect that, and I, I guess in a way. True, so I true. respect his decision. You know that's his decision. It, it was his game. He decided to pull the plug when it was making a shitload of money. I mean, power to you, man. It's. It's good. It's yeah, good. it's good. So before I let you go for the day, Mr. Rao, do tell me what can we expect, like a sneak peek of NGDC 2015. Before. It's a it's it's a continual evolution. We've learned the particular theme we are going to So to. this year, for example, uh, in the beginning of the year, we said, what are the two new things that we're going to do? And so we said, we knew that there was a high degree of interest in games in uh, kids mm -hmm. because, of course, everybody has access to devices and phones. We were curious to know what is their inclination towards game development. So we decided to run this contest with Mindbox of a game development contest for school kids. Mm -hmm. So we had a contest that ran for school kids from uh, uh, in grade 6 to 11. And we, just to test to see what is the response, we had no clue. We had a thousand kids who participated. We had like 50 schools who sent wow. teams and they're kids in kids. six cities. And you, you have the showcase of those kids. Yeah, I did, I did. I met a group of Chennai students and the teacher was so like, she was out of the world with happiness. She's like, these are my kids and they've done so well. I couldn't be proud. I just make sure that each day after school, they get one hour of gaming. Because that one hour of gaming makes sure that, okay, you know what? I want this in my game because I've played that one hour diligently. Yeah, yeah. That needs to be made like a national phenomenon. Yeah, so for us, we were blown away by the response. And that kind of shows us that the future is in good hands because that groundswell of interest yes. is going to translate to a lot of people choosing game development as a career true, true. which is a chal which is one of the challenges that we have today or a few years back you know when we started we had we had to set up a game room at Dhruva 
because a lot of people had not seen a console in their lives. And we ran that game room for many years. I mean, today we still have a game room, but it's not because of that reason. Those those days, the reason what that we wanted to acclimatize people to what this like what medium exactly was all about. about yeah. So the first two weeks, we just told them play games because we just needed to understand what this form of entertainment is all about. And today, of course, it's much different. But uh, still, a lot of very creative people, a lot of very good uh, people who ought to be in this industry are not in this industry simply because they gave it a miss. Yeah. Or be maybe they thought, you know, I'm not sure whether this is going to be a great career, you know, whatever. And they are here and there in mainstream jobs. And I think the industry would have benefited greatly if those talented people were in the gaming industry today. Yes, yes. So I think that is what we want to make sure. We want to we make sure that people understand what this career is going to be. We want them to get attracted to it. We want them to get excited about it. And I think we'll do more such outreach programs to various, not just the school kids, but you know, even engineering colleges and you know, wherever we think we can go and promote uh, you know, gaming as a career, game development as a career. And you know, it's, game development is not just about entertainment. I think there's a key piece, uh, you know, that needs to kind of be uh, highlighted. Today we are talking about, uh, you know, we have a new dispensation that's talking about digital India. They're talking about, you know, digital content creation yeah. and uh, using that as a way to kind of scale yeah. the efforts of education. Now, gamification has been proven to be very, very good at, at engagement and hence outcome in improving the quality of education, be it whatever you're trying to teach. Uh, it's, and it's being used in education, it's being used in military, it's being used in medicine, you know, it's being used in uh, hospitals in, uh, in, uh, in, for example, in, in, in Netherlands, for example, there is a gamification uh, project which helps fresh doctors who just passed out to kind of gain experience at a rapid pace by throwing virtual patients at them. Huh? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, so say you are a doctor who just passed out, and you know by normal course of uh, you know uh, your career, maybe in the first year you would have, let's say for argument's sake, you would have had a hundred patients to deal with. But with this virtual patient program, you could have dealt with quote yeah, unquote you would have like a thousand patients. Would be. So that much more practice, that much more analysis, you know, that challenges thrown at you, that makes you a better doctor much faster. True. 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 So. Same with war games. You have war games today, which is gamified, yes. right? So you can throw those challenges at at your officers and your military people at yeah, various that levels. Is so nice. And today, for example, again going back to the medical example, you've got um, a lot of lot of surgery today is is using high tech equipment. So today you could build a simulator for a laparoscopic uh, surgery, surgery or a laser surgery, yeah. and you can practice it completely in a game before going on to the before real going thing. on, just like you very have nice, flight simulators. Very nice. Very nice. And so I think gamification, I think, holds great, uh, uh, you know, promise, especially considering that India, everything is about scale. Today, if we are facing challenges at the primary education level, it's because we simply don't have the teachers. And but if we did manage to deliver high quality education on tablets, and given the fact that we're going to have like broadband reaching every village, mm -hmm. because there's a huge emphasis being put on that, then you can suddenly use technology as a transformative tool to help improve the quality of education that's being disseminated which there, which and in a fun and exciting way. True, which I, I, I think this is the basic need of the year right now because a lot of gamers do feel left out and, and I think this is for the entire fraternity out there who want to develop their life skills also. It's a very good way to develop so, life skills. So I think one of the f uh, emphasis at the conference has been also we had a session on serious gaming to expose people to the opportunities outside of entertainment. True. And I think that is going to be something that will take off in a big way and hopefully it will create a lot of jobs as well. Well, 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 ever hopeful, but then always hopeful for the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you.